Hello, shark community. Your vulnerability is your strength. Often people feel like vulnerability is a negative thing because the world in which we are living in, in the way in which this society has been framed, our perspective of vulnerability feels like a weakness. It often feels like a disability to be someone who feels deeply or is more vulnerable or shows vulnerability to the world around them. Appearing to not feel seems like a strong position because it seems like you are holding back things that might cause you to be seen in a way where you look unstable or, you know, emotionally unable to get a grip. <laughs> but the truth is our vulnerability is actually a strength. It gives us such deep insight to who we are as human beings. I've often said in these videos, you know, you can't have one without the other. You can't have strength without vulnerability. You can't have this appearance of togetherness without there being a vulnerability somewhere. It, you might be really good at hiding it. You might be really good at shutting it off. But that doesn't actually mean you have access to the power of your being while you do that. Recognizing our vulnerability is actually showing us deep insights about who we truly are. It is giving us the opportunity to explore things that we don't necessarily consciously understand. Feelings that might be coming up that aren't necessarily on the surface, easy to recognize their origins. But that depth and being willing to face that vulnerability, being willing to like explore that, being willing to explore that depth is a strength. The way in which society has formed around us has given us these continual messages that being more vulnerable is a weakness and therefore it is not acceptable to be vulnerable. My approach in terms of talking about this comes from real experience. I really do recognize that at times people do not always understand emotional wisdom. People do not always understand emotional intelligence. There is a difference between unleashing your emotions onto somebody and blaming or reacting and coming at people. That is not what I'm talking about when I talk about vulnerability. That might be a response or reaction, and it might be very warranted based on the situation that one's in, or it might not be. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the process of being an emotionally intelligent being and actually recognizing that as a wealth of your strength to face each challenge to feel your world is to feel the truth of your beingness and the world in which you exist within yourself, that exists within you. A beingness that exists within us and expresses us through the currents and the tides of emotion. We can get annoyed about how deeply we feel and try to push it aside and ignore it. But the reality is feeling is cyclic. 
when you do not feel your emotions, they will keep coming cyclically into your realm. And if you ignore that, water is uncontrollable when you ignore or when you try to suppress it. It will come through one way or another. The floodgates will open. No matter how steadfast you are in trying to block that part of yourself off, eventually it will manifest. It might manifest in the form of an illness or a long-term chronic illness. It might manifest in the form of what we perceive as mental health. It might manifest in the form of uh, difficulty in navigating our circumstances or having a very chaotic life. Either way, whether we want to recognize it or not, it's going to be there. You know, there is a phrase, wherever you go, your problems go with you. Wherever you, uh, you know, when you run away from something, you, you're never really able to run away from that. Emotions are so powerful. And when we ignore them, they almost become more powerful and more destructive when we face them and we recognize that we have the ability to be the diver within our own emotional state, but at the same time recognize that this is just a cyclic process and it's natural and that the water may seem like it's purely yours, but when we look at collective consciousness, we have high tide, we have low tide, we have these moon cycles, these lunar cycles, which cause us all collectively and through our experiences as, in, as individuals in the human experience to have this on an individual momentary experience level. And through having a physical body, Babies are born, I think, around 90% water. They are so resonant to their environment around them. And then as we get older, we lose that water content uh, and we become more land oriented. But for a long time in our life, we're actually very water oriented. We're more water than anything. We're more water than land. And this water, this movement, this vulnerability, this memory, this cellular collective consciousness that exists within all of us is governed by tides. It's governed by the currents. It's governed by the ability to be properly processed. And when we do not recognize the strength in ourselves through that emotion and we try to suppress that emotion, we only create tsunamis, we only create <laughs> uh, storms, we create all sorts of situations which manifest in our reality all around us. Our vulnerability is our strength. Your vulnerability is your strength. Recognize how powerful it is to have a human experience in which we get to actually connect with this amazing element, the water element. And we get to experience what it is to be a chalice of liquid light from babies until we pass. We are experiencing the resonance in which it forms through the receptivity of water within our being, within our, within our body, physical body. But also within a metaphorical sense in the way in which our vulnerability operates, in the way in which that vulnerability taps us right in to the past of our ancestors, the river of our ancestors, that pulse that goes from the beginning of our time based on our blood, our liquid, that has carried us all the way back from the first blueprint of human consciousness. And that, that memory is existing alive within us in the here and now. It's not them. It's within us. We're embodied within this. We are embodying these memories. And our experience in the here and now is an embodiment of everything that's ever been felt in the past, present and future of this here and now. And this feeling is our vehicle 
to a truthful connection with our experience as humans. It gives us the opportunity to go through cyclic processes until we refine our water, until we filter our water, until we move through all the debris and all the mud and all of the different aspects of that, you know, that river. And we come to this pure spring within our own being that we are and that we always are and we always have been, but we have to realize that process. We have to feel that process, that embodiment of that living spring within us is a sacred gift from great spirit, from the creational blueprint of life. This water responds to words, it responds to uh, experiences in the here and now, and it vibrationally receives everything that is happening in the here and now and works very hard within our own beingness to find its perfect synchronicity and flow. When we actively suppress our emotional state, we lose that grand wisdom of the divine feminine that works through these springs within our own being, that works through the water lines within our body and walk, works through the water lines of our lineage. Recognizing the power of what feeling truly offers us as a balance point to the mind. The mind is masculine. It creates separation through thoughts. The mind is all of creation. It is what allows us to have all of these future past concepts that we get to explore. It is what allows everything to exist in form. Water is the receiver of this form and it moves around and through this form. And it allows us to explore the journey of the here and now of this form through the experience of vulnerability we're able to be in the rapids of the here and now and explore ourselves through that element when we recognize our strength comes in acknowledging embracing that feeling state we can stop trying to push against the, the rapids and trying to go upstream and we let go and trust in the currents and flows and we just be present. We become a witness within the feeling. We stop identifying with all of the feelings as separate things based on the mind categorizing them and putting them in files and we start to go, you know what? I got this. I can face this. I can feel this. And I'm going to allow this feeling to guide me and to help me stay in momentum with creation in the here and now. And this momentum is powerful when it comes to feeling. This is what allows us to have the vibrational resonance in which gives us our power of beingness. We're human beings. And that momentum naturally leads to that flow in which our doing comes into play. But our beingness is the vibrational resonance of this feeling space. And then we use our minds to navigate through this momentum, this powerful momentum that is moving us through all of creation. When we are in the rapids of our human experience emotionally, which we would call a level of vulnerability, or we would experience this as vulnerability. And when we fully face this vulnerability and embrace this vulnerability, our lives are able to flow 
in a way where we can evolve, we can receive, we can resonate in a much more powerful way when we allow this process, which is already existing as a part of us, to be a part of our day-to-day -day navigational system. That when we feel something is off, not to override it with the mind necessarily, to create space in which you can feel this so fully that it allows you to let it subside within you rather than pushing against it, letting it do its thing, letting it come through, being present, not judging the process in every single aspect. Of course, there are going to be thoughts and, and feelings that come through and link themselves up. But the more that we get out of the way in terms of resistance and the more that we allow this process and we create these forms in which give us, you know, whether that's journaling, whether that's sitting and being in the presence of our feelings, whether that's breathing, these embodied practices that allow us to have this vulnerability and utilize this vulnerability as our strength. That's where we're heading as a collective consciousness in the here and now. That's where we need to be to fully accept the change of these rapids and learn just how to be the witness within these rapids and explore in the human experience these rapids because you will eventually get past those rapids and come to a calm lake where it reflects perfectly the simplicity of an almost an unchanged eternal reality that at times through certain phases will feel like the opposite. But the eternal nature of feeling is beingness and beingness is eternally in the now, is infinitely in the now. Thank you so much. Lots of love.